for me today. Rather an extraordinary honor because STEM has a power of its own. Whatever you say here, it has a great potential of becoming powerful across the world. Own your greatness and be your own boss. So my journey with power started long ago and rather it has evolved over a period of time. When I was a kid, that was the time I felt Undertaker is a person who has the maximum power. So for me, muscle power was the greatest amount of power. As I grew up, I found that there were people who were bullying me. So I felt that the people who are older in age are the people who have maximum power. Thereafter, my relation with power turned in terms of money. If you have more money, you have more power. Then belonging to a family of government servants, it was told to me that there are some symbols of power. Do you want to know what are the symbols of power? Let me tell you. An ambassador and a red beacon in Indian context is what is the symbol of power. So I thought, if you go high in rank in administration, you will be powerful. And thereafter, I started preparing a lot for Indian administrative services. Even after being a cop with the government, my quest for power continued. But there was one thing I clearly identified. And that was that if you are higher in power, it does not necessarily mean that you are higher in rank. And likewise, if you are higher in rank, it does not mean that you are higher in power. So, let's see how has my concept changed over a period of time. Okay, let me tell you a story from my life. It was a nice Friday evening and I was getting back home after a long day at work. I was driving my blue colored scooter, humming some songs and thinking of what will I do on the weekend. The green was nice and perfect. I could taste the food from my favorite restaurant and my hands were full of shopping bags. It was so nice that I just wanted to be in my dream. But suddenly, a lady traffic cop came right in front of me and she asked me to park my bike in one corner. But youthful in my spirit as I was, and with a newly acquired power portion, I told her, hey, I'm your staff member and I'm going on a very important assignment. This was the exact excuse which most of my colleagues used whenever they flounced the traffic rules. So I was pretty sure that it's going to work for me also. But to my surprise, the lady said, Madam, you're supposed to pay the fine. A fine? Now I realized that I had another trump card in my pocket. I took out a yellow colored ID card, showed it to her. Look, I'm your senior and you have no right to penalize me. The lady was smiling and she said, Madam, with higher rank comes higher responsibilities. And then my whole bubble of power was completely broken. Though she did not penalize me that day, but I got the biggest lesson of my life. And I feel that she is a fan of this guy that I'm going to show you today. Spider-Man. As Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. So now let me talk about another incident. Recently I went to a marriage function 
and there was this gentleman sitting next to me. So I casually asked, Hi, what's your name? What do you do? The man was pleased to talk to me. And then he told me his name. He said, I'm a major from Army. We spoke for some time. And after that, when the man left, I was made to think. I asked him, what do you do? And instead, he answered who he was. And that's what we do in our life. We have externalized the concept of power in such a big way that we use titles before or after our name. Like doctor, engineer, chartered accountant, lawyer, and even for that matter, a major. Now, today standing here, I want to ask you all that is our ability to contribute and make a difference depends on the kind of person we are or does it depend on the position that we get in an organization? Now I want all of you to sit back and relax. If you want to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. Let's travel through time. Think of the time when you were a little kid and as you were growing up, as a teenager, what did your parents and guardians talk to you about being powerful? Did they say that if you have more money, you are powerful? Or did they say if you have more authority, you are powerful? Did they say that if you have more connections, you are powerful? Or did they say if you love more, you are powerful? Or did they say Spirituality is the greatest power. Now I want you to absorb all those messages from your past and think about those things which your loved ones told you at that point of time. And as you do that, I want you to think that how is it showing up in your life today? Are you working? in complete alignment to that or are you working in complete opposition to that? There you are in life. When we are born, we are born innocent, free flowing, open to receive so many things in our life. But as we grow up, we start hearing so many things from so many different directions. Don't do this. Don't do that. Learn this thing. Learn that thing. Watch out. Be careful. You'll get hurt. And then, what is left with you is layers and layers and layers of your past conditioning. And these layers make you so closed that you either start walking in alignment to them or you start walking in opposition to them. But whatever be the case, you are being run by them. Now I'm not saying this to make you feel, yes, she's so right. Today, I want to be talking to our caregivers. I want to be asking them that is this the life that you want to be giving to your next generation? It's time for you to step back and let your children shine in their own light. And I also want to talk to the children here. Why are you not living your own life? Why do you get so much indebted to your parents for their contribution in life? When you came in this world to take your own place and not the place of your parents. Now how do you find your true power? Is there a way to find your true power? Let me tell you, the sad part is you cannot find your true power. No career, no position, no authority, no money, no person can help you find your true power. 
the only way by which you can find your true path is by releasing by removing the blocks of your past conditioning and when you do that you don't find your true self because you are already there a lot of times people are wandering from place to place in search of the right tree and you know no the right tree is not there the right tree is in here and you need to grow that right tree from within and like growing the tree is a process owning your part is also a process and you need to live that process you need to love that process the first step towards finding your true power and freedom is to disidentify yourself distinguish your mind from yourself look at it from a distance separate yourself get some space and then you will be able to find that you are not this programming but you are the entire hardware you are not what's in the vessel but you are the vessel itself and you will find that you are more powerful than your mind now the first step is this identifying yourself the next step towards finding your true power is to identify your true calling now if i ask you to identify your true calling it does not mean you go from here start pressurizing yourself start asking yourself what is my true purpose what is my true purpose like owning your power is a process trying to find your true calling is also a process and let's understand this process with the help of a story once there was a frustrated old young man who went to a village where there was a old wise man the young man said i don't know what do i do with my life i don't know how to find my life purpose the old man <laughs> smiled and said follow me and both of them went to a far away river the old man said look there are three kinds of miners there the first kind of miners are those who strike gold immediately they find it sell it and then they rest peacefully the second kind of miners are those who need to strive a little hard but they know that there is gold in the river and they have seen others getting rich so they persist and persist until they find gold and the third kind of miners are those who forget who feel that i don't know how will i get it they get frustrated with this entire process and then they never find gold now the young man was impatient he says but what has this got to do with my life purpose the old man smiled and he said in life there are three kinds of people the first kind of people are those who are able to find their true life purpose immediately the second kind of people are those who take some time but they spend some years in finding their life purpose and one day they really find something worth living and the third kind of people are those who just get frustrated in the process so quickly that they give up walk away and then they are never able to find their life purpose and they have to return to that meaningless wandering so i want to ask from you are you the first kind of miners who know what they want to do in their life from a very young age and then follow that with passion energy enthusiasm are you the second type who are striving to find your life purpose or are you the third kind of 
people who get frustrated and give up too early. Wherever you are, the river is full of gold and the idea is to strive, to persist till you find gold. Now, once you get your life purpose and you identify your true power and become your own boss, what do you think will be possible? How will your life change? Once you find your true life calling, you will start living your life with passion. You will make the life of others wonderful. You will make this world a better place to live in. And you will be far more richer than you can ever imagine. And you will feel as though the face of God was smiling upon you. Now Nelson Mandela puts it very beautifully. The deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. The deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's the light, not the darkness that frightens us. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give permission to others to do the same. As we liberate ourselves, from our fears, our presence will liberate others. And let me tell you, you can never be your boss until you decide. Until you decide. Thank you.